Uh, joining us now, former special assistant to President Trump and former press secretary to Vice President Pence, Mark Lauder. Along with, we've got former, good morning, we've also got chief strategist for Hillary Clinton's 2008 campaign and chief strategist to President Clinton's 96 re-election campaign, Mark Penn. He is the author, most recently, of Microtrends Squared. Guys, it's great to see you both. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Good morning. All right, Mark, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to start with your take on 2017 under the president. What's your, what are your highlights? Well, look, well, I think under the president... Oh, Mark, that was for you, oh. sorry. I think under the president, clearly, uh, he had no honeymoon. So he sunk right to kind of negative approval ratings. He stayed there until now. If you, if you look in contrast to Obama, Obama had an, an extensive honeymoon, but deteriorated all the way down to, to the midterm elections. The real question here is, has Trump hit the bottom? Uh, and will tax reform begin to bring him back, as some of these polls just taken in the last few days show a little improvement? Or, or are we going to see the, a continued march down uh, as, as Mueller comes back with his investigative report uh, and the, the president continues to use Twitter? Well, and, and he hasn't, again, you know, there's a lot of questions now about what the DOJ and the FBI actually, uh, what they have in their hands. They're not willing to turn that over. Devin Nunez is, is actually on that bandwagon. But Mark Lauder, I want to ask you about this. I mean, if you look to the achievements of President Trump in 2017, one of the things he doesn't seem to be getting a lot of credit for is his rollback of regulations. That's been a market positive. It's been an economic positive. Do you think that the, the, the messaging is off from the White House or that Americans aren't getting the, the message that, that the economy really has improved and the markets? I think it's one of the things that people are just now starting to get uh, to realize, and they will realize it even more as their paychecks go up in February due to the tax cut plan. Uh, so you're starting to see that economic momentum. People are feeling it. We've seen it in some of the indicators like consumer confidence, business confidence, even in the stock market, which will open again today at another record. So I think as those things continue, the, the president's going to continue to get credit for it. Uh, but a lot of the rollbacks of regulations and things, those are, those are big in corporate boardrooms and it just takes a while for it to filter through the economy and to where the American people are starting to really see the growth that's happening under President Trump. Mark Penn, Amy Holmes here from Rasmussen Reports. And I want to ask you about the Democrat strategy. It appears to be in terms of resist, resist, resist the president's agenda. We didn't see a single Democrat vote for tax reform, even though in the past tax reform, including corporate tax reform, has been a bipartisan issue. Do you think this is a smart strategy for Democrats going into 2018 or that voters are going to look and say, hey, but what are you actually getting done? Well, I, I think the Democrats had a lot of success on health care. I think they managed to convince the public uh, and even I think the policy community that in fact the Republicans didn't have a good plan on health care and, and they in effect tried the same strategy uh, on the tax cut bill. Uh, I, I think that it's an open question right now. This is really a big gamble that the Republicans have taken. If the economy continues to grow uh, I, at a 3 to 4 percent rate, I, I think that will pay off for the Republicans. If it sinks back to 2 percent, then it's going to appear like giveaways. Uh, personally, I think you're correct in the past. Democrats in Republican states would have, I think, gone along with the tax plan. In this case, they, they didn't. It was a big risk, I think, for the Democrats as, uh, as well. Uh, in an attempt to repeat what did work on health care, I think it's an open question. Mark Lauder, I have a question. This is Jack Brewer. The president has taken so much heat over the course of the last year when it comes to uh, issues surrounding race, uh, surrounding religion, uh, and those things. Leading up into 2018, you know, someone like myself, you know, I'm so excited about this tax plan, but that message is lost for a lot of people on the other side just because they can't get past those social issues and some of the things that they're upset about. In 2018, when we see a president who will step out and be just a little bit more um, cautious uh, on his approach and his responses uh, on these issues. 
I think you're going to continue to hear the, the, the president speak with his voice. But what I but what I would expect is also that you're going to see the president going into places where maybe Republicans traditionally don't go, and where he can communicate directly to communities who are now starting to experience the benefits of the tax cut plan, as you pointed out, or in some of the other areas, like in his new uh, initiative to improve infrastructure. There are so many things that we can do to help rebuild in inner cities in uh, in America, and that's something that the president's going to be very focused on and he's going to take that message directly to people and in a way also challenge Democrats to see are you willing to work with us on any issue including an issue that Democrats have traditionally been very supportive of which is investing in our infrastructure. Well, infrastructure is the one thing you think I, I agree with you Mark Lauder that, that, that we should see some agreement and bipartisanship on but this is the swamp you never know. I, I do what Mark Lauder I want to stay with you though on the on the midterms because especially with the Senate and, and what happened in Alabama, they certified Democrat Doug Jones uh, yesterday um, over that special election. You know, Moore refused to, co to concede. He wanted a special election. He was a, a, throwing out voter fraud accusations, Mark Lauder. And the, but President Trump endorsed him. And I'm wondering if, it, if that was a bad move for the party and maybe, a, maybe a, a, a worrisome move for the party going into the midterms in 2018. Well, as the, as the president said in an interview yesterday, he felt, you know, first he, he endorsed Senator Strange, who was, uh, who was running against Judge Moore in the primary and ended up losing. And then after that, it became an issue of supporting the party's nominee and making sure in a very closely divided Senate that we had a, another person in the Senate who was going to vote for things like tax reform and infrastructure. Uh, but the people of Alabama spoke. That's what we were encouraging them to do. And the new senator will be seated here uh, in a matter of a week or so. And, and then it'll be an opportunity to see, is this new senator from, you know, is Senator Jones from uh, Alabama going to vote with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and against things like tax cuts, infrastructure, immigration, or is he going to vote with the okay. people of Alabama? Okay. And that, I think, is going to is going to really kind of foreshadow the, the race that we're, that we're facing in 2018, where you have 10 Senate Democrats who are coming from states that the president won, five of those states overwhelmingly, and yeah. many of those Senate Democrats are going to find themselves in a hard They're, place trying to explain to their voters why they stood against the tax cut plan. Yeah, and you know, it's funny, though, because i got to bring this up. There was a really funny side to all of this. Al Alabama released the names of the more than 22,000 write-in votes. 22,000 for that special election. I want to see, I want, I want to show you guys this. There was nods to let's vote for Kermit the Frog. Um, Ellen DeGeneres was put on uh, the list. God, uh, Harambe, the, the ape, <laughs> Chris Jenner. Mark Penn, your reaction to, yeah, Jones won, but people were voting for Chris Jenner. Well, look, it's interesting that there were 22,000 write-in votes when the gap between the two candidates was about 22,000. Uh, and in fact, Senator Shelby and many of the uh, editorials in the state called on Republican voters to put in write-in candidates. And, and that's exactly what they did. And you could say not only did, did Democrats uh, reject more, but, but so essentially did, did Republicans. So, so I think everybody welcomes uh, the, the additional Democrat into, into the Senate and that, that Trump made a mistake zigzagging back and forth. Mm -hmm. Well, well he's, he's tweeting right now. I've got to let you both go. We do have that breaking news. Mark Lauder, Mark Penn, gentlemen, thank you.